So validity is my word. Validation. I would like I would like validation while I'm still on. Like I always hear this bullshit about give them their flowers while they're on a planet. Yeah. I want my fucking flowers. Wrestling is life. Wrestling is life. Wrestling is life. Is wrestling. Welcome everyone to another episode of Wrestling is Life is Wrestling with Cody Diener. I am Cody Diener and I am a professional wrestler. I'm a professional wrestling producer with TNA Wrestling. I'm a professional speaker traveling all across the nation, going into schools, youth events, places of business to share my story and the lessons I've learned along the way. I am also a father to four awesome kids and a husband to a beautiful wife, and this is my podcast. Welcome back. If you're coming back for part two with this week's guest, part two with Sin, if this is your first time, welcome, and I think you need to go back and listen to last week's episode with my buddy Sin to get yourself all caught up, get yourself caught up, listen to that cliffhanger last week, and we're going to start right there this week. Uh, before we start talking about Sin, let me just just say to all the fans in Philadelphia that joined us at the 2300 Arena, a.k.a. EC Dub Arena, this past weekend for the TNA Wrestling Television tapings, thank you for showing up. Thank you for being awesome, and thank you for being true Philly fans. It's always fun uh, rocking and rolling in front of the Philly fans. It was awesome. If you were not there at the tapings, I highly suggest you watch TNA Wrestling for the next few weeks. You will see me and some of the new awesome stuff that I'm doing. I told you last week I had some things to get off my chest. I decided I wanted to try something new in the wrestling world, and you're seeing that firsthand on TNA Impact Wrestling. If you don't know what I'm talking about, why don't you head on over to my social media at Cody Diener or go on over to at TNA Wrestling social media. You'll see on there exactly what I'm talking about and when I'm talking about some new stuff, some new exciting things, some things that I literally, I have no idea where this is going to go, but that's why wrestling is so cool. If you don't know what's going to happen and literally I don't know what's going to happen, then it makes it interesting. And isn't that just like life? I mean, if wrestling, you don't know what's going to happen. We never know what's going to happen in our life. Hmm, I wonder if wrestling is life is wrestling. Yes, it is. Welcome back to this show. If you're coming back, like I said, thank you for supporting. If it's your first time, why don't I take a screenshot right now of listening to the show? Tag me at Cody Diener. Let me know what you think. Also, you can help out the algorithm by rating, reviewing, and subscribing to this show on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. If you want to watch the show, or you're just listening to it, and you're like, hmm, I want to watch the show. I also want to see some of this really Really cool rest when dead merch that Cody's talking about all the time. Head on over to at Cody Diener podcast. You can see the hat I'm wearing right now, as well as the shirts that are in the background that are all available at rest when dead.ca. You can also check out the full collection on Instagram at rest when dead clothing. They're an OG sponsor of mine. If you would like to sponsor the show, you want me to do an ad read. You want me to read a commercial. You want to do business with my business on here. Then why don't you hit me up ads at Cody Diener.com. That's a D at CodyDiener.com and let's talk business and how we can get you on the show as a sponsor. If you want some bonus stories, you get to the end of the conversation today with my buddy Sin and you're like, man, I want to listen to some more. Sin was so cool. He was willing to sit around for and give me some more time and not just sit around, but like talk about some deep things that he's been thinking about in his life. We kind of even go even a little bit deeper together in the bonus stories than we did on the show because we kind of had spent, you know, the first hour or so chatting on the show. And then we started to reflect on some of the things that we were discussing. And then we ended up getting some extra content that I thought was just phenomenal. And that's over at patreon.com slash Cody Dina right now. Sign up for a free trial and you can hear some of that bonus conversation that my buddy Sin and I had. Again, that's patreon.com slash Cody Dina. But don't just support me over my Patreon. Support Sin. Support the guy we're going to be listening to today. How can you do that? Well, go on over to his social media at Sin Bodhi, S-I-N-N-B-O-D-H-I. If you're an indie promoter and you want to book Sin, 
all of that information is on his social media at Sin Bodhi. If you're looking for a really cool present, a really cool gift for a loved one and you're a wrestling fan, why don't you consider getting one of Sin's custom LJN dolls? You want to see how amazing these things are? Head right now over to Facebook.com slash Sin's LJN's S-I-N-N-S ljns and see the work that he does there if you're an old school wrestling fan you remember those rubber toys those kind of hard rubber ones that you your brother and sister and cousins played with you know you smashed them together and the paint kind of wore off onto the face you know you had george the animal steel with the red boots then you had him going against uh macho man randy savage and then macho man would stomp on george animal steel's head and then there'd be that yellow paint from his boot all over george animal steel's head yeah you can tell i'm talking from experience well you remember those dolls well guess what Sin makes those action figures. He makes them custom made of wrestlers that they never made in the series, or he can even make one of you or a loved one if you want to get him that for a gift. I can't think of no cooler gift. You want to see how he does that? Head on over to Sin's LJN's S I N N S L J N S on Facebook. I'll put the link in the show notes and you can check out all the cool stuff that he's doing there. I am going to be busy. I was busy at the EC Dub Arena uh, this past week, and I'm going to be busy coming up. I'll tell you at the end of the show, you want to see where you can come and check me out in person at a wrestling event or a speaking event. Stick around to the end of the show. I'll let you know my crazy busy wildlife as a wrestler and a speaker and where I'm going to be coming up over the next number of weeks. But let's not talk about the end of the show let's talk about the end of last week's show where we left off in our conversation with sin why don't we you just go back and listen to part one if you listen to part one you know exactly where we left off because here we are to continue our conversation with the very talented and unique sin a buddy of mine for over 20 years i've known this guy and i've said it before i've said it again he's probably the most unique guy well He's definitely the most unique guy I've had on the show, but I think he's one of the most unique and creative professional wrestlers of all time. Sin's mentor is a hero of mine, Jake the Snake Roberts. If you followed my career, especially over the last decade, you know that I use the DDT as a finishing move, and I do it in honor of my hero, Jake the Snake Roberts. He is my hero and he is the mentor of sin sin for the last number of years has driven up and down the roads traveled all across the world with jake the snake both as an opponent and a tag team partner and if jake the snake roberts is highly praising you as a very unique and creative professional wrestler which jake has done numerous times for sin Man, can you think of a more talented, unique, creative wrestler in the history of the business than Jake the Snake? I can't. And if he's saying that Sin is even more creative and unique than he is, I can think of no higher praise. So that's not coming from me. That's coming from my hero, Jake the Snake Robert. So if you did not listen to part one, go back to last week's part one with Sin, and we'll continue right now with the most unique and creative professional wrestler in the entire world my buddy and definitely if he's not yet he will be yours after today's conversation let's listen to part two with sin not only is you being you gonna help you be successful right because like jake said you just got to be you and the reason you're failing is because you're not being you not only that when you do find success because you're you the authentic self there's an unspeakable i can't even describe how satisfying that is right yes yes but you have to you have to be comfortable to know the difference between happiness and success because okay. success wise yes I'm, I'm paying i'm feeding my family i'm doing stuff that i like like i fly out every weekend i'm the fucking bull durham of pro wrestling where i just fly out and i play or coach some local good guy bad guy more of this less of this try this loosen up tighten up blah blah yeah you know seminars and selling these action figures all these different things whatever fine but is it what i want to do like i want to be a coach i want to be a wrestler you know at the bigger companies i feel that i mentally can run circles around 99 percent of whoever i don't give a fuck who gets that who is upset at that mm -hmm. put me in the ring with whoever 
there's bigger, there's faster, there's stronger, there's younger. There ain't a whole lot that are smarter. I mm -hmm. promise you, you know, mm -hmm. and that either upsets, offends, or early warning systems, they just sort of cock block. And they're just, oh, well, we'll just get this young guy that just doesn't know anything that we can tell him what we know and he'll love us and he'll think we're amazing. Whereas mm -hmm. if we tell the same shit to sin, he's just going to look at me and go, you're a fucking moron. Mm -hmm. You know, that no egomaniac wants to feel inferior. And I, I don't want anybody to feel inferior either. And I don't mm -hmm. care if I sound like a dickhead. I just, I've, I've always been a polite little Canadian, a polite soldier. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that Grand Torino, get the fuck off my lawn. I just, I'll say what I want now. Yeah. You know, like, you know, you take tough guys at, at, at uh, you know, this company or big guys at that company, whatever. Like, give me a fucking break. Like, so what is, okay, what is anybody. success then? What is to you? Like, what is success? Uh, my, so my wife would say, I, I wish you were happier. I say, I'm happy with my life. I'm not happy with my career. Uh, I'm I have fun in my career. I enjoy going to these shows. I organically enjoy wrestling the guy in Quebec or the guy in Florida or the guy in Detroit or the guy in Denver. But I, and I don't feel like I deserve anything. Again, to go back to another good friend and a coach, Gangrel, saying, mm. I owe wrestling everything. It owes me nothing. Mm. Nobody owes me anything. But the diva side of me, the heelish side of me, the tiniest of ego inside of me says, well, when I see stuff on TV and I'm like, that was the fucking shit. Like, mm. that was so stupid. Or they made this guy look so dumb because this producer obviously had no fucking clue mm. what was going on. And like, or this, like, sell something, motherfucker. Godly. Like, you guys are kicking the shit or get, like, for real out of each other. And you're no-selling it. All mm -hmm. you're doing is telling the audience it's no big deal. Trust me. And, the, and most 99% of those guys that are doing that have never organically been in a real fight. So why would they fucking know? They just know how to hit the buttons really quick. And then they have their energy. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't hit my buttons really quick in those bar fights. You know, like, this... Yeah, this trumps a power bomb any day of the week. Like, for, uh, I'll, I'll paint you a picture. If you and I, and it's never going to happen because I love you, but if you and I fought in a bar, the first guy to to punch the other guy, so that's a good straight haymaker. They're done. That's it. Yeah. Whether I'm giving up size to you, or you're giving up size to me, or youth, or height, or whatever. If you power bomb, if you got lucky and scoop me and power bomb me to the ground on the concrete in a bar, if I knock my head on the concrete, okay, fine. I could be done. But if I flat back, I'm going to, the real sell is I'm going to no sell it. I'm going to get up and I'm going to fight. And the first one of us that gets that knuckle sandwich, power bomb or otherwise, is the fucking victor. Now, two days later, I'm going to be on my ass selling that power bomb because I have calmed down and your muscles and your body and your bones and everything are going to go, hey, power bombs suck. You know, so that's, you're going to be on the couch for two days. But in the match, it's that that's going to be the immediate deal. So when, again, when I see all these idiots and like, they just stand there waiting, like you do me, like I just hit you, you, oh, you hit me. Like mm -hmm. I'm the crazy psychopath and I know that's not a good idea. So all you're telling me as a coach, as another wrestler and as a fan, you're a fucking idiot that you don't know how <laughs> delicate this is. Uh -huh. Like I promise you, I'm, I'm as, I'm not Chuck Norris, but I can fucking go. And that's not a good idea. Giving somebody a freebie. So when the audience just gets acclimated to go, oh, yeah, yeah, they're doing 20,000 punches or they're going to super kick the shit out of each other or they're going to bump the fuck out of each other. Yes. In real life, just one yes, is going right. to do it. So if you educate them into going, this, this hurts, or the power, like Ed, Edge would say to a young guy, uh, does the body slam hurt? They're like, yeah. I go, so, sell, so sell it like it fucking hurts, you yeah. idiot. You know? yeah. well, this, that's, again, that's good life advice in the sense that same in wrestling and the same in life things matter that y and are valuable if you make them that way yes right so if you yeah. make the punch mean something sure. then now it's valuable and it is yes. because in yes. reality it is right we know the effect that it has so it's and the self same. like all self yeah, like right. that and it's it's the psychology in life. yeah it's the same yeah. in life like the things that you you tell the world matter are going to be the things that matter Yes. For instance, though, so so uh, before I even even rant about the selling, I will say psychology. So like the guys are so unfamiliar with personal space, like they get in front of each other so close. Where if you're close enough to hit, and you're not hitting, then you're an idiot or a victim. Like you're a guy in a red shirt at the beginning of a Star Trek episode. You're just you beam down and you're gonna get fucking jobbed. That's how that's gonna go. So like if I'm walking down the street arm in arm with my wife, 
if some crazy dude is across the street calling me and my wife, every name in the book, and my mother, every name in the book, fine. As soon as you're in my personal space, you're fucking done. Mm -hmm. So I can be in that corner. Like, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll appreciate this. How many wrestlers do you see? They're bigger guys or scarier or whatever they are. And they're the bad guy. And then when the good guy comes in, especially on an indie show, when it's a TV good guy, and the bad guy just fucks off and powders out. All you're telling the audience is that you're a pussy. Like, that's half your ring. Stand your fucking ground. Mm -hmm. If we're going to meet on the battlefield, as soon as, like, the British show up and the Japanese show up or the whoever and the, the Confederates or the, the Yankees or whoever, and the one team powders off the field, it just tells you you're a fucking pussy. Hold mm -hmm. your ground. I'm not getting out of the ring for anybody. But I can be powdered. I can be made to powder quite easily because I'm working. Like, I'm not getting out of the ring. The only reason, uh, I, like, on a, maybe a technicality of why I might get out of the ring is if I do it on purpose by accident. So, like, I'm like, you come to the ring and just say, I, for whatever reason, I want to get out. I'll slither out. Like, it's on my time. It's my choice. Not because you're scaring me. It's because I got other things. I'm going to go fuck with that person in the front row or I'm going to go yell at Jim Ross or I'm going to, you know, something like that. But like, otherwise I wouldn't get out of the ring for the fucking undertaker, but he could easily mm -hmm. make me like if, if I cock back a punch and he just blocks it and cocks back, I could ass out and fall down and powder out. That gives me a reason, you know? Yeah. So it shows that I went right into the fire and he made me leave now win, lose or draw. He's beating somebody that's got some balls. But if I just powder out like a fucking gutless little douche, then uh -huh. he beats nothing. He ties to nothing or he wins on nothing. You know, so it's just all those things, like, like, in the, and again, going back to the nightclub, so you, you've seen two guys come out, you know who I am, you know what I could do, you know, blah, blah. bark, little doggy, like, this is just going to be an episode of World Star Hip Hop, they're just going to fucking squawk at you, nobody's going to do nothing, the yeah. guy that's going to really get down is just the guy that walks right up, just boom, mm -hmm. like, that's where you mm -hmm. take the real, and you mix it with the sports entertainment, and then you give them a believable product, and then when you want to go over extra sport entertainment and give them something funny, like, Santino's thing or yeah, the Scotty yeah. Worm or the People's Elf or whatever. Awesome because all the other the devil in the details are already on point. So you can have right. one. Yeah. Like I yeah. don't I don't ever set out to do a comedy match, but I will set out to have a, a, a humorous moment to lighten that roller coaster. That's right. Like like Star Wars is my favorite wrestling match of all time, Star Wars. Uh Intergalactic Ricky Morton against uh top card intergalactic uh, Undertaker, you know. Yeah. Um like, so it, it, in Star Wars, it's it's not a comedy, but every once in a blue, blue moon, there's, you know, Han will be like, hey, laugh it up, fuzzball, and everybody goes, tee hee, and then they get back into saving the galaxy. Like, it's, yeah. it's a moment to give yeah. people just a light little hiccup of a relaxation. Sure. Yeah. If, so, I got one for you here. Yeah. I'm really interested to hear your where where you're going to take this, because yeah. one of the things that I wanted to ask you about was many moons ago when you decided to be a promoter and and do warrior one wrestling okay. so so what that why i think this is connected to what you're saying is because i one of my questions was okay what's success and you 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 talk about oh i i working for a big promotion or doing these things have you ever thought about okay if that's not happening right now i'm gonna start my own fucking thing and i'm gonna i can do my own thing and be that coach, be, make it what I want it to be. Why don't you do that? Is there something that you learned in doing warrior one or the other ventures that you've done that like makes you not want to go that route or was there, so, failures there? Yeah, kind of what, you know what I mean? Like what's, so what's that's a great question. So yeah. yeah, that's an awesome question. Um, so it just, it, being a promoter, I think is a thankless job because like you're, you know, if I'm just me and I'm flying out to wherever XYZ wrestling to perform and I'm a good guy or a bad guy, all I have to ask the promoters, you want me to be a good guy? You want me to be a bad guy? How long do you want? Who do you want over? Cool. Thank you. And, you know, there you go. Done. Yes. And then I'm no bus, no bus. I'm, I'm one person babysit myself. Then my next thing is, where can I find some poutine? Where can I pee? Where can I shower? Where am I sleeping? What am I, you know, just a little basic, uh, the little things, you know, but when you're a promoter, you're, you're doing that for 40 other dudes. And you're worried about the gate, the purse, uh, the, the payroll, the insurance, the ticket sales, the advertising, the venue, the ring setup, the ring crew, uh, the booking, booking, uh, the creative stuff is the easy part. That's the fun mm -hmm. stuff. But like all the real life logistics, like if you said, uh, Cody, you're the promoter and you said, uh, Nick, um, 
uh, you're wrestling Eric Young tonight, but he's got a flat tire and he's in Ottawa. He's still two hours away. Um, uh, you know, when, when it's your setup, could you just, could you go to the ring and just be an asshole for like an hour and just, or could you just fuck around and just what, until Eric Young gets there or Bobby Root, whoever the fuck it is. Yeah, no problem. You know, or here, could you hear where this tutu and here's this giant piece of raw fish. Just go figure out something entertaining with this for an hour. I'm your guy. I'll, I'll do that. No problem. Yeah. Creatively. But logistically, making sure the payroll, the advertising, the insurance, the menu, all that stuff, that's what's going to give me a fucking heart attack. Nice. And then combo that with there's some great talent in the locker room, and then there's some assholes and idiots or, you know, entitled, like, hey, can I have some more? Oh, on Freak Show, did I just write you the coolest character that got you over more than you've ever been over before, and then you, you come back and you do this to me? Fuck off. You know, or if you guys are such headaches, when, I, when this is less fun than it is more of a headache, you're going to be out of gig. It won't be it'll be fine because i'm freaks of wrestling i can fly wherever and if i want to do you know beds and nails and darts and this and that and this and that uh -uh. it all came out of my head you know so but again but i'm just babysitting one guy and even with with warrior one it was an awesome experience and Devor is like hot to this day because i think um the the gate that i that i drew on my first show was like one of like the, the biggest gates ever in ontario history that was like non-wwe oh. Wow, awesome. Um, so nice. he's like, ah, how do you fucking do that? You know? <laughs> and just elbow breaks. I fucking work my ass off. And I had, Demore was awesome on that show. And Demore, I, I just have to say, I will say that I don't know the whys or the hows or the inner workings of, of TNA and why Demore isn't there. But I think I love him. He's a, such a good human. And, and he, he was so helpful to me on that day at Warrior One. He has been so helpful to me in life. Like he's helped me a couple times. He got my ass out of a couple jams here and there when I was the green guy and he was, you know, the war. He was the all-knowing, uh, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. All that stuff. He was yes. the, the guy, you know, just the senior yeah. guy that just knew his way in and out of things and helped me out, you know, a few times over. And I will not ever forget that. And there will always be a, uh, there will always be a guest room with his name on it. Um, there will always be... Uh, uh, a helping loyal assistant in, in me anytime he needs it wrestling or otherwise. Yeah. Uh, and so I just, I appreciate the people that have been kind to me over my, my journey. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So I don't know where I was going. Oh yeah. So with the more and, and, and warrior one, like, like he really helped me. Like I was so green, you know, I just, I want to do something really cool and I had so many guys and they were all pretty, pretty darn cool for the most part. And mm. more helped me put out a couple of fires that day, helped me make some decisions that day. Uh, give me I creative ideas that day and he really helped me yeah just uh, i don't mm -hmm. want to beat a dead horse but just yeah, throughout my yeah. career demore has constantly kind of come in and out and helped me so, so when i scott when i scott's been the exact same for me in so many sure. different scenarios sure. i when i hear your experience with warrior one or being a promoter i uh empathize and see myself a lot in you because I've said this to you before, and I think I said it earlier, but I'm going to say it again. Like you're one of the most, if not the most creative person that I know. And Thanks, I think, I think Jake <laughs> nailed on the head when you asked him, like, does that mean I'm going to die poor because I am th this creative genius? And he's like, yes, that's what that means. And I think sometimes, and this has happened to me when I start a project, like a podcast, like I, really love the process of creating it. I love this conversation. I love deciding in the moment where are we going to go with this conversation? Because nothing that we've talked about today is anything that I had on my notes. <laughs> nothing on your street. <laughs> right? And so we no. call it to the fly. Right? That's so why like, we don't uh, plan high spots. That's why we don't exactly. plan high spots. We just organically have the yeah. match and life ensues. Yes. So I'm a, create, I'm a creative guy. I love the creative process of things. Sure. But so, so like my speaking career, I love being on the stage. I love speaking. I love telling a story, having interacting with the audience. And oh my, I'm, I'm going to tell this story I've never told because it just popped into my head. And I feel like that kid needs me to hear it or needs to hear it. So it's like, I love that process. However, I'm also my own agent. I have to book yeah. my own flight. I have yeah. to like make cold emails, cold calls to schools. I'm my own everything. And that I can get bogged down in those details. I think my wife really harps on me on, for, on this. She's like, you need to find people. You need to build a team and maybe find yep. the people to do that for you because yep. you're never going to get this thing off the ground or get to that next stage 
if you try to do it yourself because you hate sure. that stuff because you're a creative human being and you're not going to do that stuff. Well, also, um, also, too, I think, I think we're also similar in the sense that we don't want to bug anybody. Like, I'd rather go an hour out of my way to save you five minutes. Uh, you know, I think that that's the Canadian in, in this, maybe. Yeah. Yes. But um, so uh, two things kind of pops in mind at, at listening to your awesome, intelligent uh, ideas and, and philosophies is that, A, something I took another thing from Jake was as a coach and, and as a wrestler and in life is Jake would say, this is why he wanted to ride with me. And this is why he was, you know, a, a booker at WWF and all this stuff. He goes, I know talent. Because I can just look at you and just assess mm -hmm. what you have. And I'm not talking about your high spots. I'm talking about you as a human. Like, I, I want good people. I want honest people. I want creative people. Um, I want people with heart. Like, I remember asking Dr. Tom one night. And, and that's another guy. Don't get me started on the good doctor. But, like, mm -hmm. when the good doctor calls me and asks me a question, I'm like, holy fuck, did the good doctor just call little old me and say, what do you think about this? Like, that's a, again, that's a mental championship belt all to its own. Hell but yeah. I remember saying to Doc one night, I go, how come this guy isn't getting a push? And he was this big, huge dude. It looked awesome, whatever. He looks at me because he doesn't have any heart. Wow. And I thought about it for a second and, and I go, how do you figure? He goes, I looked, I, I know, I see him. And I thought, and that just, that just made me, because I was so wrestling tunnel visioned, I was mm -hmm. just thinking about being wrestler, playing wrestler. I, it took me so long just to step out of that bullshit, step out of that tunnel vision, and just look at life. Because I would have spotted that a mile away in a nightclub or in a, at a karate tournament or something like that. But in the ring, you're just like, whoa, you're so enamored and you're so mm -hmm. giddy about all this stuff. You're so in, enthralled that you sometimes don't see the forest through the trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing uh, we're talking about is like the being happy in, in life. And so you're like, so why, why not just promote versus, you know, why do you want to be at a big company? And I think the whole, like, again, that 25 year stretch, that, that life sentence of being invisible, like, oh, you helped train Bray Wyatt. Oh, you helped train Crazy Steve. Oh, you helped train Angelina. Oh, you helped train uh, Karrion Cross and Chris Bay and those are all this stuff. And uh, Zoe Stark, all these, like, whatever. And then again, happy for all of them and all the people I don't know or didn't train or whatever. But when you think, oh, when I kind of, when my ego does kick in and go, well, what about me? If I'm good enough to train these guys or work with these guys or break in these guys or whatever, whatever, like I've broken in, got my paw prints on so many dudes. I couldn't even tell you from, yeah. you fucking name it, from yes. Mr. Perfect Kid all the way to Tommaso, you know, you just name it. I've got yeah. my fingerprints on a lot of these, Beth Phoenix, you know, all these people. And so I, it's like a 25 year stretch of feeling invisible. And I just kind of think mm. that so the, the, the word I'm, I'm going to answer you with is val validity. I want to validate myself. I want to know that I can be in that coach's locker room at WWE, AW, TNA, uh, NWA. And, and my mind is on par with a Cody Diener, with a Dr. Tom, with a Jerry Lynn, with a Ace Steel, with a Jake the Snake, with a Dutch Mantel, with a, mm -hmm. you name it. Yeah, like again, there's there's wrestlers that cannot wrestle me, and there's guys that are bigger than me, guys that are faster than me, guys that have better abs than me. Like my abs are protected under a sweet layer of meat pies. Uh, <laughs> but at the same, but, but but creatively, I'll go toe to toe with fucking anybody. Yeah, and bro. in the old giverness of my heart is like, I'm not gonna like I can hang with it. Like I'm not gonna out wrestle somebody, but I can keep up with fucking anybody. Yeah. And I just think as a player coach that has that unicorn age of, again, that third element of that feel, mm -hmm. like, again, when these young guys are watching YouTube and they see it and they hear it, if you wrestle me, you can feel it. And you go, oh, this is what it's like to lock up with somebody from the Midnight Express or somebody from the Rock and Roll Express or yep. Jerry Lutler or some such. Like, I remember wrestling Dreamer one night and he's just like, God, it's like wrestling a dude from the 80s. Like, you're just so fucking smooth. He's like, yeah. I just I didn't even know. I just, I thought you'd really be really stiff, to be honest. And I'm like, so I've convinced you that, that I'm dangerous. <laughs> <laughs>
He's truly a member of the Rest When Dead family. He's been a friend of the president of Rest When Dead, Aaron York, since high school. He was the very first person to support Rest When Dead when, with the very first online order. The first online customer for Rest When Dead was Jesse Scott. But his connection to Rest When Dead goes deeper than that. He is my friend and was there the very first day that I started wrestling school. I started wrestling school because Jesse Scott decided to start a wrestling school and start a wrestling promotion called Fighting Spirit Pro Wrestling. He created a platform for individuals like myself, Eric Young, Sean Spears, and fellow Rest When Dead athlete Crazy Steve. None of us would be where we are today in the wrestling industry if it wasn't for wrestling promoter and fellow wrestler and Rest When Dead family member Jesse Scott. But Jesse Scott has a very different, unique, and difficult challenge ahead of him right now because Jesse Scott has recently been diagnosed with cancer. Jesse Scott has always been someone who displays a fighting spirit both in and out of the ring, and we know that he will display that same fighting spirit for the challenge that he has ahead of him. And he's going to need to show that fighting spirit because he is surrounded by a beautiful family, he has a wonderful wife, and he's also the father to three young boys. And in light of the challenges that are posed by Jesse's new circumstances and his wife's decision to prioritize time at home with Jesse and the kids, Rest When Dead is proud to introduce the Jesse Scott Fighting Spirit Signature Tea. Rest When Dead commits to donating 100% of the profits from this shirt to Jesse and his family to aid with their expenses with this challenge that is ahead of him. Furthermore, 50% of the profits from any additional Rest When Dead merchandise that's purchased in conjunction with the new Jesse Scott signature shirt will also be allocated to support Jesse and his family. So head on over to restwhendead.ca and consider supporting an amazing family man and a proud member of the Rest When Dead family, Jesse Scott. So validity is my word. Validation. I would like I would like validation while I'm still on like I always hear this bullshit about give them their flowers while they're on a planet. Yeah. I want my fucking flowers. Yeah, I that's, get that. That's man. where I feel. I understand. And if it's not yours, I don't give a fuck. I've been I've been twenty five years of being a baby face. If, if honesty makes me a heel and every true heel is justified, yeah. so fucking be it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I feel give like, me a producer. Yeah. I get that. I I think that I don't know, man. I for me I've learned that there's a there's a book out there it's called the second mountain and the only i don't i didn't even read it i've just heard about it and other people talk about it and i i do know that uh the the journey that this this the main character goes on is they their whole life is like to climb this mountain to what they think is the peak and they get to the peak of the mountain and then they look in the horizon and they go oh fuck there's a second mountain <laughs> no doubt. And right. I've got no problems with that. I would I welcome that. I yeah. I instigatively welcome that. Like right. fuck yeah, I'll take two or three or four or twenty mountains. Okay. But I would like yeah. to clip this one mountain to say I see. Validation wise, like, mm -hmm. yeah, I deserve this. Okay. Like yeah, I, I can't I can't I'm sorry? That makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. Yeah, like I, 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 I don't yeah. wanna I don't wanna hold back something so I can ration out my talent. I want mm -hmm. to give you everything and then it'll force me to think of something better next time that I don't have in my toolbox today, or that yeah. will be there tomorrow or the next day. Yeah. Like if I, well, if I just do that, like you always hear, like give them these sort increments. Yeah. But don't, don't ration your shit. Mm -hmm. Give them uh, again, to use a, a term that a, a friend of mine uses is give her today, but then also give her, give her tomorrow and give her the next day and so forth. Right. And then yeah. my ox did, ran, did a run in here. So you might see a big giant pit mastiff. Oh, um, 
I want to I, I want to say this because I've had this has come up in a lot of other conversations and it's 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 unique to our conversation right now is I've talked about kind of where I've asked my guests like where they find their true joy and it's very it's almost to the T every single one of them. It's like, well, I don't, they don't find their true joy in wrestling. Um, they, 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 they bring over a fresh bowl of poutine. That's where I find my joy. <laughs> right. So like you even said it earlier, you said like, you said, don't get me wrong. Cause you were talking about your ego and the things you want to accomplish. You preface that by saying, I'm very happy in my life, right? Like you, your personal life, the things that you've accomplished, the things you've built for yourself, all those fucking action figures that are behind you that you have created and done and like you've been able to feed your family like there's so many positive things that you you are happy about but i think there's something admirable that i know there's people listening to this right now that i think it's going to help them and go okay you don't sound like a bitter prick that's like uh oh, man my the, my time's passed me by and i should have been handed this and done that it's like no i have these goals that I still want to accomplish. I still want to, I still want to do, and you're still busting your ass and doing the things the way you think need to be done to make those things happen. And there's something very admirable about that in, in that you have found joy and happiness in your personal life, but there are still things that you're working towards because you're not complacent. You're, you're still working towards something. Yeah, you know what? I don't, I don't ever have bitterness. I have drive. Yeah. Like, I'll channel any insult. If you call me a name, I'm not going to get upset at that name. I'm going to take that as a challenge to, like, prove to myself and then by proxy proving you or whoever, you know, this is how it is. Yeah. Like, like uh, maybe, I don't know, a few weeks ago now, I was just, I was literally outside feeding my goats. I'm out there playing with my little critters, you know, and Gagrell calls me just out of the blue for no reason. And he's a, a very good friend of mine. He's a sweet human being, just a great, like in the ring, that's a 280 pound pit bull. Look out. But uh -huh. in life, sweetest combined. Yeah. And he calls me up and I'm like, what's up, man? And he goes, uh, Nikki, I just want to say, uh, I just, you were on my brain and I just wanted to call you and just say, Hey, um, I had a bad experience at this wrestling show. I just saw how many of these young guys were just fucking morons and entitled and weak. And they just, He's just like, it was just put such a bad taste in my mouth. And I thought of you, you're one of the most positive guys I know. And you teach the right way. And like, man, I wish there was more coaches like you. And I feel the same way about David and Gangro. And I was just like, thanks, man. And, and as I, I hung up, I didn't realize how much I needed a phone call like that. You know, like, it was just like really cool to like, he didn't have to do that. He had no reason to do that, except he just did, you know. And it was such a sweet thing. Like, again, going back to that invisible invisible thing that's my sort of my hang up you know mm -hmm. and so like i'd rather you tell me to fuck off than ignore me yeah so if i want to be an agent if i want to be a producer if i want to wrestle if i want to do this if i want to do that tell me okay or no fucking thanks or, or get the fuck out of here but mm -hmm. if you ignore me and i get and i or you know we, we all have thick skin i can handle it just fine you know i remember hearing like you know shane helm saying you're going to get a thousand no's and all you're looking for is one yes mm -hmm. you know that's fine no problem but I'd rather just, I just damn near rather be told to fuck off than just to be ignored. Okay. And again, 25 years of like, well, again, I, I don't need to just spout my silly accolades because wrestling is so silly and subjective. Like I didn't run more yards than you. I didn't get more RBIs, more goals or more touchdowns. I'm not a better wrestler yeah. because of it's subjective yeah. art. Who's a better actor, De Niro or Pesci? That's fucking whoever Scorsese wants to put over. Right. You know, it's mm -hmm. just all subjective art. So so understanding that and then, and then finding like, well, okay, I did this, I did that, blah, 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 you know, get us world, get us world, uh, book world records, uh, only guy to fool Penn and Teller, only this, da, 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 America's got talent, Star Trek, fucking you name it. And then I see some guy that's like in their first year and they're on TV. I'm like, I'm happy for that guy. But like, I got more knowledge in this fucking pinky finger. And that dude, and that dude is like the size of my fucking forearm. And I'm not talking about any one specific, I'm talking, there's a ton of dudes that fit what I just described. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't get it. Like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? In all my, in all my crazy psychology and wisdom, I'm, I don't get it. Yeah. You know? Well, when I see guys, sorry. No, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. No, and I just, when I see stuff, like wrestling is so insane that you can't make heads or tails sense of it. Like, oh, we want more real. 
And then you've got somebody, they've got a midget going through a fucking painted hole in the wall. Or we want more, we want more of this, we want more of that, we want more collegiate. And then, then there's some guy in some sparkly underwear, you know, whatever. It's like, yeah. it's just a contradiction on top of a lie, on top of a farce, on top of a whatever. So mm-hmm. a long time ago, I just had to realize this is insane. Wrestling is insane. The planet's insane. Enjoy yourself. Don't let any of that stuff rent space in your head. Just enjoy your life. Mm. And then, but, but the trap door to that is like, I would like to be validated in that crazy sure. wonky, sure. Well, you know, I love it so yeah. much. And, and even if I loved it, that I sucked. I could live with that just fine. But yeah. I, I, I've literally bugged people. I've literally called up, you know, so-and-so and so-and-so like, tell me straight, do I fucking suck? Like, am I just, is my head just in the wrong spot? Like, am I just, right? am I, do I think I'm, and I don't think I'm awesome, but I do, again, I know what I know. And I've experienced what I've experienced. And every one of them would just kind of giggle, go, you don't suck. Shut up. You're just, you're, you're, you're on a whole other fucking level and you're, you're rain man driving yourself fucking crazy. So right. yeah. go, go enjoy think, yourself. Yes. I think, I think that uh, one thing that comes to mind and you said, I don't need to spout off my things, but you started to go off on all the things that you've done. I mean, well, I, a, I stuck it in, you know, I snuck, it, I snuck in. Yeah. Like, so like, which I feel like, man, I want to talk to you again because we've already gone well over an hour here talking. I want to be cognizant of your time, but you're, you're, you're my friend. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you until my phone dies. Um, I think there's, there's something to, I like to get your take on this. Like yeah. I've always believed I've heard this. And when I reflect on my journey, I think there's something to it is it's about, the journey, not the destination. Yeah. And if, if you seriously look at all the crazy things that you've done, the people that you've got to meet, you've talked them about them here today, like your hero, Jake, the snake Roberts. And then you, you, he tells you that you're more talented and creative than he is, which is just a freaking mind melt. Yeah. That, that's a, a mental, that's a mental that's championship mental, right there. Yeah, that's like something that I, I can't even, I can't, my brain won't, can't even compute that. Cause he's one of my heroes too. Like I can't even, I can, uh, let me give you, let me give you a compliment on here. One of many, I could, I could, I could compliment you all day long. Um, but I remember talking to Ricky steamboat and your name came up and I was obviously talking about you in a good light. And he kind of said he, he, he was so flattering. He's like, yeah, that, that kid knows his shit. That kid can, can, can work. And, uh, and he doesn't say that about a lot of dudes like he and he would have no reason he, he would like, he's a great, polite, nice person, but he, he could easily change the topic. Like he would have been like, no, but yeah, he was yeah. like, yeah, he goes, that guy can, that guy can go. Wow. He's like, he can work and his words, he can, he can work and you can, you're, I mean, you're awesome, dude. Thank you. Sure. I think it's so important that we have those mental championship belts. That's one thing I yep. really learned from this conversation. It's, it's like, for me personally, that's really helped me. That has helped. You're talking about validation. Yeah. I was, I, and you, you just talked about Ricky Steamboat. I've, I've said this to a couple of people. I was just telling somebody the other day. I said, one of the biggest, actually the biggest compliment I've ever been given in my career was from said Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. After he did a weekend working with me as my manager, he came up to me and made a point of coming up to me in the locker room, shaking my hand and saying, Cody, you're an awesome worker. Yeah. He came up yeah. to me and told me that personally, yeah. which meant the world to me. But I was going through it. He didn't realize that at the time I'd been going through this this time where very much like you said, like I, I didn't make that phone call, but I did it daily to myself. Like, man, do I suck? Like, am I any good? And if all I do is read the comments on my YouTube videos, then I think I'm awful. And if all I do is listen to what the Twitter verse is saying, then I, I'm the worst wrestler in the world. But then I realized, oh, wait a minute. All these, you know, ham and eggers that have never been in the ring before might say I suck. But yeah. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat said I'm awesome and I'm a yeah. good worker. I yeah. think I'm going to hang on to that validation more than anything else. Here's the silly thing, and I, I, I'm not trying to pick a fight with, with the Twitterverse or anything like that. But to be honest, uh, half the insults, are, 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 sorry, half the, compl- half the compliments are dumber than the insults. Like, <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, I'll take a Ricky Steamboat bit of advice or a compliment any day or crit- criticism or heal i'll take yeah, yeah. i would rather hear ricky steamo heal on me in criti- in, in positive criticism than to hear some fan say something so stupid you know even if it's meant in, in a good light because again like i'm track quarterbacks you know like i like i remember hearing like road dog who's another great guy who's like oh yeah Simbo, he should be working here like he's his brain is fucking awesome you know and, and uh you know what is he gonna say he uh just brain farted i was gonna go somewhere with road dog um just explaining about like how 
Like if you've never been in the ring, that's what it was. If you've never been in the ring, you just you just don't fucking know. You can guess, but you don't know. Yeah. Like, oh, being on the moon looks really fun. I guess it should probably be fun. I guess flopping through that uh, zero gravity should be really neat. But I don't fucking know because I've never stepped on the moon. That's right. You know, so, yeah. you, I played a lot of video games. I sat on the couch. I logged a lot of couch hours watching Raw and SmackDown and Dynamite and Impact. And, you know, I don't know. You know, aren't you quarterback? Yes. But uh, hands on. Uh -uh. Yeah. Well, brother, I... I appreciate your time. I appreciate you. I think you're, like I said, I'll, I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. I mean, you're one of the most talented and creative guys that I know, <laughs> in, not just in wrestling, but in life, which is why I wanted to have you on here to talk Thank about you. it. And I wasn't, it's, I'm so glad we called it in the ring, brother. Like I had notes. I didn't get to any of them. We just, we just ran this like a sin Bodhi wrestling match. We just called it. Oh, like shit. And we talked oh, about let me, let me tell you, let me tell you this uh, on that same note. So uh, I'll hear guys when I say that, uh, let's, let's, let's go take a spin off the fly. Let me take you for a yeah. test drive. And they're like, well, I, they're like, well, I'd rather call it in the back because I want it to make sense. I'm like, um, that doesn't make sense. What you're doing is you're just trying to fit in the stuff you want to do. You're wrestling for yourself. I want to do this dropkick. I want to do this super kick. I want to do this Canadian story. I want to do this blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Versus if you go to the ring and you do A. It connects organically to B, to C, to D. Oh, if I'm wrestling, I grab Coney Diener and I, uh, I don't know, I, I grab his finger. Well, now he's got to sell his finger. And then when you block the punch and you go to Chop Man and you sell your finger, like everything is just going to just mm -hmm. trickle accordingly. As opposed right. to, well, we got to the drop kick. I don't know yeah. if that's got anything to do with Cody's broken finger. Yeah. You know, so... It just, it just, it just kind of domino effects with logic, but there you go. So anyway, and I will, I, so, and I won't keep you, even though I, you're, I'm the guest, I, I will tell you this in closing, yes. but I will give you a, such a feel good thing. Like my favorite match wasn't against an awesome TV wrestler that I love. Like I've had so many crazy weird bangers with like Gangrel. We've done all sorts of crazy shit or different guys or whatever. I get wrestled the fucking road warriors. Yeah. Wow. My favorite. My favorite match was against this kid from one of my fantasy camps. Where you know, I had Ricky Steve on one of those, and even he was like, I can realize it's not, this is not a worker. This is a fucking bark that has no business being in the ring. We just have to dance around them lightly and just blah, 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 blah. And so this kid that had autism came in all the way from England to Vegas to do the fantasy camp. And I'm not a doctor, and I don't know much about autism, but I know enough to know, I'm pretty sure they don't like to be touched so much. You know, they, they, they got yeah. that sort of thing going. I had to quickly think like what and his scouse British accent was so soupy thick. You could <laughs> barely I was like you could it was almost like a Scottish. It was this like his name was Drew. And I was like, How are you, Drew? Like, oh yeah, but oh they were doing that, doing this, all that. Like <laughs> that English, did I just hear English come out of his face? Yeah. And and so he was very sweet, but he looked like he was like thirty five. He was like twenty one. Like he just okay. he had this he was on the spectrum and yeah. his mom brought him. And so I'm like, okay. So I did a half day camp with this kid and I pulled a whole fucking match. It's on YouTube. I'll send you the link. Oh, it's not a five star match, but it's um, like, it's as good as any indie fucking match. I swear to God. Wow. And like, and this kid is zero athletics, zero instincts. Even when I took a first bump, like he just, just put your arm out straight. Like I'll, and I didn't even touch him. I took a bump on the clothesline and he was like, yeah. oh, like he heard the ring. Like, yeah. like that shotgun noise from the bump. And I'm like, it's okay. I'm okay. He's like, oh, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just playing, just playing, just pretending. Yeah. And so long story short, we get to the match. We have the match. It's fine. It's good. And the mom has like a tear in her eye. Mm. Like, are you okay? Like I thought there was something wrong. And she said, I haven't seen him smile or have any physical interaction with anybody, let alone his, like his, his kind of his, uh, not a, his shrink, but his, like his therapist, whatever the therapist is. Like yeah. that, that does physical stuff with him. Like in you did more in half a day with him than this person did in like two years. Like I've never seen him be so alive. Yeah. And her like she had a tear in her eye. And I'm like, holy fuck. I'm like, I use my powers for, for that. That's that's what I did. Holy shit. And then I emailed her the match and she emailed me back and she said, I just want you to know that uh when he was in there with you, that was his favorite day on planet Earth ever. Like his words. And so wow. I was thinking that with my silly little phony baloney wrestling skills that I was responsible for some person's favorite day. I'm like, fuck, that's my, that's my favorite match of all time. That, that beats anything I've ever wrestled with Jake the Snake or MVP or fucking, uh, you name it. Oh.
like I'll fucking take that. And so I think it's important for for wrestlers and all of us to just like you said in life, not just not just yeah. wrestling, but like do stuff that inspires you, it makes you happy, it makes you kind of fulfilled. And and if you yeah. hit those goals, great. If you don't, just try. I had never heard that one before, and you just you just made my eyes burn. So uh, that's a good. Yeah, one. I'm cut, I'm cut, my, I may or may not be cutting onions over here. So. Oh man, that is that is. It just, it just put it into perspective to, for me to like 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 when you hear that cliche, and I mm-hmm. I fully believe it. I preach it all the time. I preach two things. I preach safety, safety, mm-hmm. safety, safety, and more safety. And then as far as the entertainment side of it, I preach smiles on faces. That's the yeah. fucking that's yeah. the jam. However, I don't give a fuck if you do it with a suplex, with an eye gouge, with a silly promo, with a strut, with a dive, smiles on faces. Yeah, brother. And just just do it safe. And that's what life's all about, man. If we can just make somebody else's day better, let alone create the best day of somebody's life. Oh, brother. I I like I like that Tyler Durden. I I like that uh, the um, the Fight Club, the Tyler Durden uh, disposable friends conversation. Mm. Like you're on an airplane, or you're in a lineup, or you're somewhere, you just say something friendly or silly to somebody next to you. Then, like, you know, my kid would look at me somehow, like, "Why are you talking to this perfect stranger?" I'm like, first off, I'm six one, two hundred forty five pounds. I'm really not worried about somebody, you know, doing something stupid. So I'll just say dumb shit in the in the attempt to make them smile or go, yeah, you know, whatever. Like if I was my little tiny little ninety pound daughter, I'd say, you know, be quiet, don't don't whatever, just behave, don't piss off anybody. But I, I don't do anything to be a jerk. I do it just to be friendly. And pretty much 9.99 times out of 10, people giggle and suck, say something right back. And, oh, thanks, man. Or, oh, yeah, yeah. or have a little conversation. And I never see that person ever again, like on an airplane or at a line up in a Dunkin' Donuts or wherever the, in the airport or some shit, you know. Yeah. Just just being friendly, smiles on faces, yeah, brother. disposable conversations, you know. That's right, man. Yes. Um. I forget where I was. I know I was putting you over. You were, you were uh, sending me on my way. You were like, get the fuck out oh, of here. That, okay. So, oh no, what I was wanting to lead to is, is actually trying to steal some more of your time because I want to, I want to end the free version. And what I do as a true worker, uh, as Richard okay. and Greg said, I'm a good worker. Well, I'm also yeah. a, 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 a worker in this podcast in the sense that sure. I, I, I want to try to make, make some dough off of this conversation. So I sure. do that. I do that on my Patreon. So if, sure. if, if you can give me a few more minutes of your time, what I like to do is hit the stop button on this free version. And I tease my listeners right now saying, Hey, if you head over to my patreoncom slash Cody Diener, we are going to get a free or a, a, not a free, a paid bonus story from our buddy sure. Sid. Um, sure. One that you're never going to believe something that you as an average civilian is never going to, you've never heard the story. It's going to be something crazy. It's going to blow your mind. Uh, sure. I'm sure that's happened multiple times to the civilians <laughs> listening to this today, but sure. can you stick around and give me like one bonus story? We'll record it for our Patreon. I'll put up on there. And then anybody that's interested in that can go over to my patreon.com slash Cody Diener and support this project. Can you do that for me? My brother, Nick? Yes, sir, Mr. Diener, sir. All right. Awesome. I love it. Thank you, brother. I love you. Thank you. I love you. That's going to do it for another episode of Wrestling is Life is Wrestling with Cody Diener and with my guest for the last two weeks, Sin. What did I tell you? Talk about a unique, creative, insightful dude. Oh, man, it's always good talking to Sin, listening to those stories. I'm so glad that I was able to share that final story. I actually did some splicing. I'm not sure because I'm so good at producing and editing. (laughs) I can't even say that with a straight face. Uh, That final story um, of that mental championship belt that Sin talked about where, you know, he got to create the best day in the life uh, of a young man that was actually recorded as bonus content for my patreon and i was so touched by that story i'm like no i have to like splice that into the show so i took that off my patreon which was going to be a paid story and i put that on to onto the podcast i knew that was a perfect ending and also so inspiring for me to hear uh such an inspiring story i just had to share that one i didn't want to make anybody pay for that over on my patreon that had to go up on the free on the free show so 
thank you, Sin, for sharing that story with me and my fans. And just thank you for everything that you do in the wrestling world. You are a true treasure to this business. I appreciate your mind. I appreciate your spirit. I appreciate your love for wrestling because just like my listeners, you've got a, a deep passion for this, just like I do, just like my listeners. And it's really cool when wrestling and life can connect us all in a very unique way. And that's what this show is all about. So thank you, Sin, for joining us for the last two weeks. And thank you to my listeners for joining us along for the ride. Next week, I will have a new guest. And I'm going to give you a little teaser right now. It's a guest that people have been asking for since I started this podcast since day one people were asking me if i was going to have this person on and i knew i had to have them on because they are a very 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 integral part of my career and my journey uh in professional wrestling especially my journey with tna wrestling and the television wrestling i've done that's all i'm going to give you for a hint but i'm super excited to have this guest on i will have the full conversation early and ad free up on my patreon so you've heard me say it a million times let me just say it again the, the content over there with the bonus stories with sin as well as the bonus stories from all my past guests as well as early and ad free full conversations including my guests for the next few weeks is up at patreon.com slash Cody Dean or sign up for a free trial. It's not going to cost you anything. Do a free trial. See if you like it. You like the content and then consider being a supporter from that point on. I appreciate you very much for supporting me. If this is your first time listening again, like I said, at the top of the show, you can rate review, subscribe on whatever podcast platform that you have so that this gets downloaded right onto your phone and your device every week it helps the algorithm helps the show and helps me maintain my top rated podcast status that like i said a couple weeks ago i was number four in japan uh in terms of wrestling podcasts in japan i was ranked number four. Oh man keep that that role and that's all thanks to you the fans i appreciate you guys listening each and every week if you want to support me in person come watch me at an event i will be upcoming on the 28th at iwr insane wrestling revolution in monroe michigan then i'll be on the 30th i'll be at top tier wrestling in hamilton on april 13th i'll be at neo spirit pro in niagara falls and then if you want to see what i'm doing in the speaking world why don't you head on over to chrisgracespeaks.com and see everything i'm doing in the speaking world and better yet head on over to my twitter facebook and instagram for my speaking which is at chris grace speaks that's gray with an a and if you like what you see there and you're like man i would like to learn more about what this guy's doing in the speaking world maybe bring him to my event that i'm putting on or go to my kid's school i think it'd be a really cool guest to go speak to my kids at my school why don't you hit me up chris grace speaks at gmail.com just go to chris grace speaks.com fill in the booking form i can answer any and all questions for you and maybe i will be coming to your town soon you can also support me by going to cameo.com slash Cody Diener and get yourself a personalized video or go to pro wrestling tees.com slash Cody Diener get yourself a t shirt if you want to book me on your indie show your promoter I got a lot of indie promoters that listen to this show I got a lot of indie wrestlers that listen to the show because they feel like they're in the car with me driving up and down the roads it's one thing I hear all the time from both wrestling fans and wrestlers that are listening to the show hey thank you for all you wrestlers that listen to my show if you want to bring me to your show I do seminars uh as well as appearances so if you'd like to bring me in maybe um I can share some of the knowledge I've learned in my crazy journey in wrestling with the wrestlers at your indie event and then appear on your show. Why don't you hit me up, book Cody at CodyDiener.com. That's book Cody at CodyDiener.com. And maybe I can come to your town here soon. That's going to do it for another week, guys. I appreciate you guys so, so very much. I just need to say thank you again to Sin for being such a wicked awesome guest for the last couple of weeks. And I'm looking forward to next week's guest. If you just go to at Cody Diener and I will be introducing and um, announcing who next week's guest is going to be. It is going to be awesome i'm looking forward to it not just because they're an awesome guest but because when i talk to next week's guest we're gonna learn yet again as we always do that wrestling is life is wrestling we'll see you next week guys wrestling is life wrestling is life wrestling is life is wrestling